hearing in the last couple of hours. The world of rugby, the world of sport, is in mourning after the news overnight that New Zealand legend Jonah Lomu has died at the age of just 40. Here is Jonah Lomu now, 18 stone of him, thundering up over the 22. Lomu out to Little, Little's over for the try. It's going to be the first try for the All Blacks. And that is the first we've seen of the mighty Jonah Lomu. The white to Lomu. And immediately, Lomu also the trip. He's gone straight over three people. Rob Andrew couldn't stop him, Carling couldn't stop him, Tony Underwood couldn't stop him. And after just two minutes, Jenna Lomu has given New Zealand the lead. He'll be remembered um, not only for being a truly amazing global sportsman, and of course some of those incredible encounters that we saw in the 95 Rugby World Cup against England, he'll be remembered for his sportsmanship. Yeah. Yeah, if you're just tuning in and it's uh, 7.48, uh, you may have missed the breaking news that the New Zealand rugby legend Jolo Lomu has passed away at just the age of 40 years of age. Here's how the sporting world has been reacting on Twitter. Johnny Wilkinson, of course, uh, former England international legend himself, says, I am so, so devastated to hear the passing away of Jonah Lomu, the greatest superstar and a, just a fabulous human being, deeply saddened. And Cardiff Blues, one of Lomu's former clubs, the All Black in Blue, Rugby's first global superstar, a friend we will miss always, RIP Jonah. And Bill Greening, the former England international as well, said, such sad news, huge heart and warmest smile ever, saw him during the Rugby World Cup and he had the warmest welcome, proud to have called him a friend. Yeah, Dan Carter, current All Blacks legend. I still can't believe the sad news. Love and thoughts go out to Jono's fam family. Thank you, Ray. Um, uh, that's what uh, some of the rugby world have said on social media after uh, the New Zealand great Jono Lomu passed away during the early hours of this morning. If you have a now let's get a view from the other side of the pitch. Somebody who played against Jono on several occasions will have watched his development um, as one of the world's superstars of sport, not just rugby. Is our own Brian Moore. Good morning, Brian. Morning, Brian. Good morning, boys. I mean, I mean, we know Jonah Loma's been sick, but this still comes as somehow that this is an amazing shock. Yes, well, I mean, it's a combination of him being so young, isn't it? Um, the fact that people thought they knew him very well because he was probably, well, probably the most famous rugby player ever, I would think. Yeah. And one of few rugby players to become a genuine um, global sporting superstar. Talk to us about, um, about him on the pitch first, Brian, well, uh, and, and well, what, what it was like to play against him. <laughs> well, look, I mean, the thing is, um, he appeared on the scene in uh, 1995, the World Cup, and people, but probably a lot of people don't know, that he very nearly didn't get selected. He wasn't first choice, and had uh, Terry Wright been, uh, been fit, he may not have even t travelled to the tournament. And he appeared started to run over people and people looked from afar and thought this is because um, he's playing against players who aren't very good and then uh, I remember England having a game plan to say right instead of um, putting two or three players on him said no we'll just do a man to man because uh, you know the, the defences that he's running against before aren't as good as ours and then uh, everyone knows what happened to that plan. He scored four uh, tries. Well, two minutes after exactly. two minutes after two minutes, he ran over three. Mike Cat, I think Tony Underwood, one other. They yeah, uh, Rob Andrew as well. Yeah, I mean, it, just, <laughs> it, 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 it was it was it was shocking when you were on the field. It, it, it was seeming. I mean, and, and to be fair to South African, they learned from that, and they learned that what you had to do with him, the first man had to just keep hold of him. However. You did it, even if you were just holding on to a, a shirt tail, and then two <laughs> or three other players could come in and knock him down. Because if you if you didn't do that, you you weren't going to stop him. Um, and he was a template for the, the you know the modern big wing. Yeah. The, the thing of, the thing of, the thing about him was, not only was he big, but he was quick and he was elusive. Uh, he was very balanced on his feet, and the fact that people the fact that people could knock him down quite a lot was because. You know, what he used to do was just move offline, and if you didn't get a full shot on him, he was going to run through you, with, you know, because an arm tackle was never going to stop him. And Brian, actually, just noticing, I've been watching the clips here out of the corner of my eye all morning, 
and we always remember him running through people but the number of tries where you're absolutely right Brian where he does a small step to put the other players off balance it's a great skill as well Ray you I think you had a question yeah no I just wanted to to ask Brian you know obviously Brian knew him probably personally so uh, what sort of guy was he because he was a world you know a legend around the world which uh, not many people can say they are um, and obviously off the pitch, uh, there's so many good reports come out that he had selfies with people and he was really down to earth. And I, I think one of them, Brian, was, uh, who you're scared of? And, and he said, my mum, you know, so yeah, he's, yeah. It's a, that's the sort of guy he was, wasn't it? Well, well look, uh, he was completely, um, the opposite of what he appeared on the field, the field which was, you know, uh, fearsome and aggressive and brutal. He, yeah. was a, he was quite a gentle guy. He was a very softly spoken he was very kind. He was, um, it's incredibly upsetting, actually. Um, it's very, very upsetting. The, the, I mean, the guy had time for everybody. And bearing in mind, um, he was from a, he had a difficult childhood. He was from a, you know, a, a, he had a difficult background. And he, he came up and he got so, so much attention, never phased him in the slightest, the least star-like person the least diva-like mm. person you would ever, ever, ever meet. And, uh, Brian, I guess it's, uh, I don't want to go into a cliche here, but it's not about rugby, this, is it? The world of sport has actually lost as one of its giant figures. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, you, you look occasionally uh, down, and there are people who make their mark. Uh, and this is a point to people outside their sport, people who have no interest in it, and they recognise something, and they see something, and they note something, and that's what people will be doing today about John Loma. Brian, thank you very much for coming and joining us. Uh, we wanted to get somebody who knew the man. Thank you very, very much to Brian Moore there. Uh, and if you're just joining us, and it is about just coming up to five minutes to eight, um, on top of all the stuff about football and uh, Wembley last night, we're getting the news that uh, over the last few hours that Jonah Lomu, um, just a, a, a giant of modern sport, has died.